Welcome to Flow Working, the entrepreneur's podcast. Before we begin, make sure to tap the subscribe button so you never miss out on any advice from one of our guests or regular experts. Hello, welcome to Flow Working, the entrepreneur's podcast, the podcast where entrepreneurs come to hear tips, tricks, and advice from other entrepreneurs about what it takes to run a business in all types of industries. And my guests share how they turn their passions into business. I'm your host, Megan Anderson, and in this episode, I'm joined by Michael Weckner. Following the Air Force, Michael worked in technology space, developing software and technical systems in the civilian air traffic control space. He also worked for aviation companies, oil and gas companies, and worked on software for the International Space Station at NASA in Houston. No matter where it was, all of Michael's jobs had significant writing components to them. Much of his work has been as a technical writer, yet he's always written creatively. This, to him, is wordplay, writing content for small businesses and business owners. Michael loves helping businesses grow and seeing them shine through the written word. If you can read it on social media, in a blog, or a website, he can write it. Currently, he's in the process of finishing his first book, which we published in the summer of 2022. This has been a dream of Michael's for over a decade, and being able to see the completed project in his mind brings a smile to his face. Welcome to Flow Working. It's nice to have you joining me today, Michael. Uh, it's awesome to be here. Thank you, Megan. Yes. So I'm excited today we get to talk a bit about writing. Content writing is something that I know a lot of people shy away from, but you sort of dive deep into it. And I know for you personally, you get a lot of satisfaction and uh, gratification from writing for other people. So tell the audience just a little bit about, you know, your background and then also, you know, what you get from doing this kind of type of writing for others. Well, background getting into writing, I actually have always enjoyed writing. Uh, I'm composition class in high school and the university was just like, oh, this is easy. Um, and I've always enjoyed it. Uh, and part of the part of it is because I have a heart to help people. And I know that a lot of people, they either don't write well or they don't choose to write because it just seems like a chore. But for me, knowing that I am working on words that are going to, in some cases I've done resumes and actually helped people get jobs. So changing economic futures of people's lives is really cool when you think of it from the broader perspective of the resume gets you in the door and then you get an interview and then you land at your dream job. Um, Most recently I helped an aspiring nurse with his application to nursing school. And that was 12 essays and a resume and a cover letter. And he actually sent me a beautiful text about how he was one of 30 people that got selected for this prestigious nursing school at Michigan State. And the beauty of it is he's already a certified nursing assistant. He was already training new certified nursing assistants. And so, and talking with him, I had, confidence that he would do very well on his oral interview and he he this is what he wanted to be since age 11. so helping somebody achieve their dream and the beauty of this school is that it takes a three-year course of study and shrinks it down to 18 months and the piece that he really was looking forward to is you start doing clinicals in the first week so you don't take like a year learning books and then you go graduate because his his heart was i kind of equate him to the movie patch adams if you Mm. will he just wanted to help people Mm. and this will get him in i mean his first week in school he'll spend two days doing clinicals wow and so that's and you know just that's why i write because i really enjoy i yeah i enjoy writing for myself but um that's what the book is about it's actually but it's actually to help people as well and I recently um, got a, got better acquainted with a woman that I met several years ago. She's an artist, and she asked me to help her shine in the written word because she's applying for a artist in residence position, which I have no doubt she's going to get this because she's got the credentials and she's very well spoken. She's also a public speaker and a poet, okay. so she does a little bit of writing and just setting her up for success is something that really just, you know, that just turns my, turns my juices up and I'll, 
I'll be finishing that up in a day or two for her. So yeah, that's, that's why I, that's, that's the gratitude and the gratification I get from helping other people through the written word. Well, that's so wonderful. Cause it's, it's interesting how, I mean, I've struggled at times in my life with writing. Um, and I know that having somebody else take, you know, take what you say and just put it on paper and then read it back to you. It's like, Oh, oh yeah, that. Cause so many of us get <laughs> stumble around, you know, we don't always write like we speak or we can't quite put those words together. And I think, uh, you and I many, many moons ago talked about writer's block and you said, it's just an excuse. True. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's true. But it's so interesting how many of us will, will just let that sit there and not actually take the chance mm -hmm. to put it on words. So it's fun to see someone who's like, no, I love using my words to help other people achieve yeah. goals in life. Um, yeah. So I'm curious, I mean, you've done technical writing. Obviously, that's been that career side. But why writing in general? I mean, there's, you know, there's all kinds of ways. Writing's part of all of our worlds, but why did you specifically hone in on the writing um, aspect of, of doing a business? Well, the writing, you know, the reason why I, I kind of defaulted to it, my career as a software engineer ended in October of 2010 when they canceled a program at NASA where I was working. And I always just enjoyed writing. Um, as an example, I courted, if you will, my second wife um, by writing these really long emails early in our relationship. And then I came and she would always respond with just like, oh, thank you. And that was a reply. And I'm like, what's going on here? And so after she did that like two or three times, I'm like, well, how come you don't ever write me anything longer than a couple of words? And she said, well, I didn't want to tell you this, but I'm dyslexic. And so I was writing these really long emails to her and it was taking her literally an hour to read my emails because she was just, she still is. But, yeah. um, you know, I just always have enjoyed writing. Um, and it, it's just a natural outlet of who I really am mm -hmm. and being able to help people. And, you know, it's just, a. I mean, I, I remember when I wrote some social media posts for you and, mm -hmm. and you ended up gaining a few clients because of the words that I put that you actually post posted, but I put in, in your mm -hmm. hands for you to do. And that made me smile a lot. I'm like, awesome. She's got a couple of new clients. And that's what the whole point of these posts were. So, I mean, I just, it's, I, I enjoy putting words together. It's like assembling a puzzle. I mean, it just mm -hmm. kind of flows. One of those things that kind of flows and I'll go back and, you know, reword things occasionally and, and that type of thing. But yeah, you know, for the most part, that's, it's just comes natural to me. It's a natural skill that I have. So, yes. Well, so I'm actually going to say, okay, tip time, because <laughs> that's part of what we do here. <laughs> so if we sure. are, for those people who are watching and listening and they're going, okay, I hate social media posts. There's a couple of things you told me and I want you to talk about like, Number of words and like spacing in per particular when writing a social media post. What are some things to keep in mind about how it's a bit different than writing a book or an email? You know, mm -hmm. it's a specific type of writing, but it's something we do all the time. And like you said, you helped me get around my own over talking and over writing mm -hmm. <laughs> in social media. So tell us a little bit about specifically social media writing. Um, sure. Um, social, it's. It is a social thing, and that's one thing you have to keep in mind. The litmus that I learned that serves really well in social media posts is you never make your sentence any longer than the width of the social media page. So you don't want to go text wrap on a foot, like on a Facebook post, uh, that type of thing. LinkedIn's a little bit different. You can go a little bit longer on that. Um, but you want to take the person on a verbal journey. Much like, you know, you take people on a journey through your videos that you do. You talk about here's where here's what why we're here. This is what we're going to do. And it's the same type of thing. Only in social media posts, if you are using them as an organic way of marketing your business, you want to start off with you got this problem. And this this problem probably looks like this. Boom, boom, boom. And you basically call out three pain points that are associated mm -hmm. with that problem. 
And then a very high level way, you show them three different ways you're going to solve those pain points. And you take them literally, you've got A, B, C, and then you do A, B, C. This is how I'm going to help you overcome A and B and C. And then you put what's called a call to action in the end, and it can be simple. If you're doing something organic, you could say type help in the comments below. Mm -hmm. And that's a door opener to establish a conversation via instant messenger. And eventually you can move them on to like a telephone conversation or something mm -hmm. like that. But you want to keep them short and simple because people's attention span on social media is like, they even say it's less than a fly. <laughs> but it's, so it's very, very, very brief. And the, the most important part of a social media post is the creative, either a picture or a video. Mm -hmm. And the words that are on top, they call that a headline. And so you want either the words or the creative or both to grab people. Yeah. And there's a lot, there's a lot more that goes into it than that, but that in a very high level brief overview, that's how you do an effective social media post. No, it's, and it's true. I think one thing I, we've all seen those posts where you, you it clicks to see more and then the, 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 this goes to like this and ever growing and you're like, nope. Moving on, <laughs> no, too much. Or then no. you see the ones that it's, it's you know, see more, but then it just comes like this. And it's like, oh, okay, I've got 30 seconds to read through it and maybe click yeah. your thing. So it, it, it's interesting. I loved how you said social media posts about being social. Yeah, and that's the same thing with a video. You, If you get over five seconds of viewing, that's actually pretty impressive. And you know that. You I do. mean, it's good. <laughs> You don't catch them in the first sentence. They're gone. Yep. Nope. It's, yep. it's, it's they're gone. super yep. fast. You know, we've gotten down to the TikTok, you know, short little, although it's interesting. TikTok just went to 10 minutes. So, <laughs> so now, oh, no, it's, how are you? <laughs> yeah. but, but what's interesting is you're right that it's, it's on the social platforms. It's that first 10 seconds. You got 10 seconds and I'm sure it's the same with writing that headline. Yep, the headline is grabber. same thing as same thing as your opening sentence in your in your video. Yeah, that that really grabs them. Um, so I know one of the things that you do a lot is because I'm on your email list. Is you send out a bunch of of emails, and they're usually really thought provoking and have quotes or you know articles, you know mm -hmm. links. And so I love getting them. And I think it was yesterday or today that you sent one on confidence. And I'm curious how confidence and writing go hand in hand or maybe not hand in hand if you're missing it. Um, but talk a little bit about, you know, why, why confidence and, and how that kind of shows up when we're writing. Well, it's confidence is, is the most attractive quality in a human. You can, you can look at history and, there have been confident people that have been really, really good. And there have been some confident people. I can throw out uh, several names. Adolf Hitler comes to mind. He was very confident. But the end game for him wasn't as positive as, say, Martin Luther King Jr. Or, I mean, you can look at JFK. Uh, and some of the people from, you know, I mean, look at people like Ed Milet or some of the like Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins is, exudes confidence. Oh, absolutely. And, and when it, as it relates to writing, it is the confidence to know that what you are writing is going to be received well. And you have to almost develop the mindset of, I don't really care what people think about what I write. And and just go forth and do some will some will be really well done and some will be well received um the part about writing is it's a good thing to know your audience so um but confidence so uh, the best description or attributes and confidence it's fluid fragile and situational and the way that, the reason why that's true is because and we had, we talked about this a little bit about skills if you have a skill, like in, in me, it's writing. I'm very confident in my writing mm -hmm. because I've done this a, a, a long time. But if you're learning something, like in your case, when you were learning how to do podcasts and videos and things like that, 
maybe not so confident as you are now that you've got a couple of hundred behind you, wherever how many there are. Um, but it's also fragile. And this is this is kind of a cool thought. Confidence is like a garden. After you plant and water it, so it begins to grow, and then you must maintain it. You got to get the weeds out. And the way to, to increase your confidence, especially when you're learning a new skill or if you're going into an unknown place that you've not been before, just take one step and that is then celebrate the result, result you get from that step. And every time you get a favorable result, that's going to build your confidence. Yep. And so, and, but you want to take little tiny steps to begin with because confidence is fragile. So the more that you do, and the more re positive results you have, the better and more profound your confidence will be. It's true. It is and so true. a lot, of, yeah, a lot of people don't think about it like that, but it is true. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. we've, we've heard the adage that, you know, it takes 10,000 hours to learn a skill or to master a skill or whatever the, the saying, I'm sure I slaughtered that saying, but you know, that's, that's a long time in life. And it's, okay, so I'm going to wait till I've done the 10,000 hours to feel confident. You'll never get to the 10,000 hours if you don't celebrate. I love how you talk about those baby steps. Take one step. Okay, lesson learned. Great. Celebration. Great. What's next? Yeah. So if I can throw a quote out there, this one actually just resonated with me. Um, Self-belief and hard work will always earn you success. And this comes from an international cricketer named Verakat Kohli. I believe he might be Indian or mm -hmm. Indonesian or something like that. But there is a there is an equation there. Yep. Self belief, self confidence, and when you combine it with hard work, mm -hmm. and that's the piece that I have I battled to go <laughs> through is the work. The work. Yep. I can I can talk about my goals. I can write about my goals. But if I don't do anything to actually achieve them, then they're just going to be words on paper or they're going to be air coming out of my mouth. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Words without action. You know, you say this all the time. If you want to know somebody, don't listen to what they say. Watch what they do. Because it's the True. same thing. And confidence is the same way. And in writing, I think it's the same thing that you have to keep going. Like, okay, I wrote something. Was it received? Was it not received? Okay. Nobody, nobody read it or nobody clicked my post. Well, okay. Mm -hmm. When I was talking to the guest earlier, you can't do something once and then have it not work and then just stop. Yep. It's like, okay, what about this didn't work? Maybe ask some questions, maybe get some other people to read it, but figure out what about it wasn't work, but you can't stop. And I think that's where writing gets sticky for people. Is it can be. Yeah. They either don't want people to read their words, you know, or they get negative feedback. People are like, oh, I, that's not how I would have said it. That's okay. That's somebody's opinion. Now there's, there's another, this is kind of a loosely ba based quote from Will Smith. Oh, mm -hmm. And he actually says that his confidence is his response to fear. Mm, interesting. So what he's actually doing is he's running away from fear. And yeah. that's, what, and it comes across as a very self-confident person, which he is. But I just thought that was interesting because, you know, he's not letting fear stop him or hamstring him or, mm -mm. yeah. So. yeah. So out of curiosity, you don't have to tell the whole book, but what is your book going to be? The, the one that is coming soon. What's your book about? My book is about life lessons that I've learned through my life. Mm. And, and. I've taken a pretty significant personal development journey in the last four to five years and periodically throughout my life. Mm -hmm. But it is just lessons that I've learned that will help you through your journey and life changing events. Or, I mean, it could be moving. Well, it is moving, having children, uh, death in a family, um, divorce, marriage. Every, all of that is life changing and yep. some of it's good, some of it's bad. Mm -hmm. What I found in the overarching, if you look at, at your life, you can look back on even the most maybe awful situations you ever found yourself in and you can find out they actually worked for you. Mm -hmm. 
So they didn't actually happen to you. They happened for you. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the underlying theme of the book. But it's very, it's, the title is Thought Bites, and it's very, very short. You could almost look at it like Reader's Digest, nice. little thoughts, mm -hmm. thoughts. This is what happened to me. This is the actions that I've learned that will help if you want to take them. And yeah. so you learn a little bit of a lesson and you'll learn if you want to apply them some some steps and, and action steps and things like that that will actually help you go through that particular life-changing event. Well, I think that's fantastic because I think sometimes we just need a direction. <laughs> especially get, one if, idea can change your life something you know? somebody saying one thing and you're like oh i never looked at it that way mm -hmm. oh that action never occurred to me because you're so in it or stuck in it or it's that repeated cycle type of thing and you're just like i can't yep. see beyond and someone helps you with just a little little thought bite so I, I love that that's what you're doing look forward to seeing that come to fruition it's fun to get those kinds of lifelong goals accomplished it does give yeah. you that confidence <laughs> but you have to have the confidence yeah. to get there that's the truth especially when writing true. true putting a book out there that can be a little nerve-wracking i did it myself years ago a couple years ago wrote a book and went oh nobody's gonna want this and stuck it in the shelf and there it sits i actually thought it was pretty good that's what i, I put out an e <laughs> <laughs> I, like, it was I don't know good. why you think that so it's funny how we do that that other people read our words and go Wow, well, no, I this is actually really, you know, really useful, really helpful. So I think taking the the chance to be confident in your own writing is is sort of the overall lesson for that, for sure. So what is a way if people wanted to get some advice or maybe get some ri written words done for them, how could they connect with you? Um, what's one simple way that they could get connected to you today? Oh, uh, LinkedIn is probably the best place to go. So just uh, connect with me on LinkedIn and in, in my name and, um, you know, send me an instant message or private message or whatever they call them on LinkedIn. <laughs> and then we can connect and uh, maybe arrange a conversation and, and that type Perfect. Of so for all my watchers and listeners, all of that link is um, below in the description. So you can just tap that to get connected with Michael. And again, just instant message him if you're interested in getting someone to help you with some of your own writing because even in this day and age where video is is the king hey you can't get anywhere without the written word either so i appreciate you joining me today and thank you for sharing your wisdom with us all about the written word and i look forward to seeing the book as soon as it comes out yeah and i very much appreciate the opportunity megan thank yes. you yes to my audience, my watchers and listeners, thank you for joining us today. And I am wishing you peace as you flow off to your business day. We'll talk again soon. Are you a business owner with tips of your own to share? Go to flowworking.net. That's F-L-O-W working.net to schedule your episode taping today.